Okay, so I typed on Google, what are the disadvantages to hydroponic gardening? And this list popped up, so I had a little read. And I realized pretty quickly that these are mostly myths, and the ones that aren't myths can be really easily avoided. So let's dive right in. Number one, they're expensive to set up. Compared to a traditional garden, a hydroponic system is more expensive to acquire and build. I feel like the ambiguity is a little bit dangerous here, but I want to meet them in the middle before I move on. So they're probably talking about more high-end hydroponic builds like HPA or, or uh, high-pressure aeroponics, or even an LPA build can be a lot more than just like a regular soil garden. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they're likely talking about something like that. I feel like there's a lot of context missing here, like you usually don't grow just one plant in your hydroponic garden. I mean, let's talk tower gardens for a second. You can build a decent tower garden, utilizing a hydroponic drip setup for around 100 bucks. Something that can grow 20 to 30 full-size plants, and if I were to grow 20 full-size plants in soil, I would need beds. Anyone who's built or bought beds will tell you they're a lot more than 100 bucks. I'm just talking from experience here. I grew in soil for a long time before I switched to hydro. So, I looked into the cost per square foot to do raised beds. And to do a DIY setup, which is what we're interested in, you can manage between $25 and $50 per square foot. So I figured we'll split the difference and do $37.50 per square foot. And I think it would be fair to compare with my last tower garden setup. So, here it is. So I ran all the numbers, and my garden would actually require 9 square feet in a raised bed. Or, $337.50. On the other hand, I paid $97 to create a 20-plant hydroponic tower garden. Total cost per plant, $4.85. And the raised beds, total cost per plant, $16.80. So even if it cost me three times as much to make that tower garden, it would still be cheaper to do hydroponics. So even if we're talking about doing an individual pot versus a five-gallon cracky setup, the cracky setup is definitely going to be cheaper. I mean, water is cheaper than soil, and you can buy a five-gallon bucket for four bucks. And then if we're talking about a hydroponic garden versus a soil garden, the hydro is always going to beat it in price as well. So number two, vulnerable to power outages. So this is kind of a half-truth to me. I look over at my cracky garden and none of those have power cords coming out of them. But yes, it is true that all the other types of hydroponic gardens do require a small amount of power for either um, air pump, water pump, a fogger. So yes, that is a tough thing to get around. However, you can make a small investment into your garden and pick up one of these. This is called a battery backup. So this is used in like an office setting to keep a computer on during a power outage with your generally small power consumption as long as you don't try to plug your grow lights into them. Um, these could actually last your garden, you know, a day or two if the power goes out. Number three, they require constant monitoring and maintenance. I was actually really confused when I read this because if there's one thing I, I distinctly remember when I made the switch from soil to hydro was that plants needed me a lot less. I mean, you don't even have to water them. I didn't have to worry about bugs or parasites coming up out of the soil. I can easily tell the amount of nutrients in my hydro garden and if I want to find that out in my soil I have to get one of these tests and individually test the MPK. So I mean, honestly, unless you builds a really terrible hydroponic setup, then the maintenance shouldn't be high at all. All the maintenance that I do in my gardens is about once a week, I'll check the levels, I'll check the pH, uh, and I'll check the, the EC, and give the gardens that need to top off a little top off, probably about a half an hour worth of work every week. And like I said, you don't even have to water them, so I don't know where that came from, but I don't think that's true at all, personally. All right, number four, waterborne diseases. This is another half-truth because I feel like there's a lot of user error involved. You know, you can get waterborne diseases, but it's not a guarantee. I wouldn't be surprised if I got algae in this setup because I'm inviting it because it's glass. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if I got root rot in a setup where the water temperature was over 85 degrees because that's what invites root rot. So. So I really feel like if you do a hydroponic setup correctly and you know about all the parameters that need to be set, you shouldn't run into waterborne diseases. It's a bit like saying, you know, if you buy a fish tank, your fish are going to die. Well, okay, there's some stuff in between there that went wrong, I feel like, right? Number five, problems affect plants faster. 
I was also a little confused when I saw this one, and not because I disagree with the statement, just that I didn't really think it was a bad thing. I mean, it's kind of a common fact that hydro gardeners are, um, I don't want to say control freaks, but we enjoy having the control over all the parameters in our garden and also making quick changes if we notice that something's wrong. You know, for example, if one of my gardens is showing signs of a deficiency or a pH imbalance, it's really easy for me to just completely pull the nutrient water and put new nutrient water in there that I know is good. As to where my soil garden, you know, I, I can amend the soil until I'm blue in the face, but for one, it's going to take a lot longer to reach the plant, and it's not going to be a full wipe of whatever's in there. So if there's a parasite or something already growing that's eating at my roots that, in soil, there's not much I can do about it other than derooting the whole thing. As to where in my hydro gardens, it's a quick fix. But so yeah, problems affect plants faster, but on the other side of that coin, they also grow faster, they use less resources, and when they do show the signs quicker, you're able to make changes much faster. So the way I would flip that is just to say it's not even a disadvantage. That's a great thing that your plant's going to show you what's wrong with it faster. Hey, let me know in the comments below if you think there's anything I should add to a follow-up video, and let's keep growing. Thank you.